before we get started with our show today, let me just say, here's some good news for Troop County. The first annual Troop County Valor Award was held at the September Early Bird Breakfast. Five awards were presented to local public safety personnel. Here are the awards being presented. The award for the Communications Person of the Year goes to Nikki Mallory. On April 1, 2013, at 5.46 a.m., 911 received a cell phone call from an open line. Nikki Mallory was the dispatcher that took the call. Upon answering the phone, Nikki could hear what appeared to be a male and female yelling in the background. Nikki tried to get someone to respond to her voice commands, but no one did. As she continued to listen, Nikki was able to decipher that the female was concerned because the male had allowed someone who had burglarized a local business inside her home. After realizing that this person had broken into a business, Nikki advised the LaGrange police dispatcher and the on-duty supervisor for the police department of what she was hearing. Using the cell phone number, the caller's last known address was found and officers responded to the location to check on the open line and the information Nikki had provided. After arriving, evidence from the break-in was discovered inside the residence and a suspect was arrested. Using her dispatch skills of listening to the background conversation, Nikki was able to help officers solve a crime that had occurred earlier that night and recover the stolen property. The Public Safety Award for Public Safety Unit of the Year goes to Troop County 911, Amanda Nichols, Daniel Howard, Carrie Knuckles, Nina Glover, Brittany Kuhn, and Amy Maines. On June 2, 2013, at 8.55 p.m., Troop County 911 received calls from bystanders attending a block party at Calumet Park on Union Street in LaGrange. They indicated that several males were carrying guns and threatening other males in attendance. After those initial calls, reports came in that guns had been fired in the area and that some bystanders had been shot. During this time, 911 received a total of 47 emergency calls from people attending the block party. The calls included shots being fired, vehicles being damaged by stray bullets, individuals being shot, and people unable to leave the scene due to the large number of cars in the area. These ladies were handling the calls that were coming in and dispatching law enforcement units, including LaGrange Police, Troop County Sheriff, and Georgia State Patrol, emergency medical units, and fire units to the scene. These dispatchers, working under a very stressful situation, performed their job in a very professional manner, making sure that the information was passed on to all responding units and that all units in the field remained safe. The Public Safety Award, Public Safety Person of the Year Award goes to Detective Casey Fuller, West Point Police Department. Detective Casey Fuller serves in numerous capacities with the West Point Police Department. He is currently assigned to the Criminal Investigation Division and investigates crimes against person and property, illegal narcotics, and drug intervention. In November of 2012, Detective Fuller, along with members of the West Point Police Department and the Drug Enforcement Administration, began surveillance on a person of interest suspected of selling large amounts of marijuana over the past several years. Ultimately, two pounds of marijuana were purchased from him. Intelligence revealed that the suspect, aside from his residence, also rented two other pieces of property. On June 11, 2013, after a brief vehicle pursuit, the suspect was arrested. After search warrants for the three locations used by the subject were attained, officers recovered another 10 pounds of marijuana, money, a handgun, ammunition, two vehicles, and other items all believed to have been purchased with drug proceeds. Additional information gathered during this investigation resulted in the arrest of another suspect from the Atlanta area and the recovery of 30 pounds of marijuana and an additional handgun. As a result of the investigation, approximately 56 pounds of marijuana with a street value of $67,200 was taken off the streets. This was the largest drug seizure in the history of the West Point Police Department. 
Investigator Fuller has performed his job with exceptional skills, expertise, innovation, and results. The community and the police department commend him for his actions. The life-saving award goes to Wendy Bishop, LaGrange Police Department. On June 30th, 2013, Officer Wendy Bishop, along with other officers, responded to Revis Street in reference to a subject that had been stabbed. Once on the scene, it was discovered that the victim was losing an extraordinary amount of blood from his leg. Officer Bishop wasted no time and jumped into action. She cut the pants leg off the victim to find and evaluate the wound. She then had a civilian bring her gloves and another officer bring her a set of leg restraints that she used to apply a tourniquet. She then had an officer bring a water bottle so that she could clean and better inspect the wound. Officer Bishop maintained the tourniquet until the LaGrange Fire Department arrived on the scene. She briefed the fire department personnel on the wound and continued to hold it until EMS arrived. Later, while speaking to the LaGrange Fire Supervisor on scene, Sergeant Taylor learned that due to the amount of blood loss, it appeared that the victim had a severed artery. By applying the tourniquet, Officer Bishop may have prevented the victim from bleeding to death on the scene. Sergeant Taylor documented that Officer Bishop's exemplary actions saved this victim's life and her professionalism and dedication to duty bring great credit upon herself and the LaGrange Police Department. The Bronze Medal of Valor is awarded to Investigator Sean Clark with the LaGrange Police Department. In May of 2013, Investigator Sean Clark was on vacation in Apalachicola, Florida with his son and some friends. While there, he observed a contract worker for the Florida Department of Transportation lose his balance and fall 70 feet from the side of a bridge into the water. Because he was wearing a work harness that was still attached to a piece of the safety rail, the man was unable to reach the surface of the water. Clark and his friends immediately took action. Sean jumped into the water, freed the man, and then proceeded to get him safely into the boat, which carried him to an awaiting ambulance. Thankfully, the man wasn't seriously injured and soon recovered. Sean received a letter from the vice president of operations for the company the victim was working for at the time, praising him for his actions that day and thanking him for saving their employee's life. It is clearly evident that Sean's actions saved this man's life that day. I want to say to all our local public safety personnel, congratulations and thank you for all the work that you do and the service that you render to our citizens. Today I have guests on from the LaGrange Memorial Library. I have on the manager, Catherine Adams, along with the community organizer, Loretta Clinton. Lady, welcome to the show. Well, thank, thank you. you. We're glad to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with both of you ladies today to talk about something that is really, really important in our community, in our daily lives, in our daily occupation, and that is reading. But before we jump into the program at hand, I want to learn a little bit more about uh, you, Catherine. I, I've had an opportunity to work with Loretta in some past uh, adventures there. Uh, but I want to know a little bit about you as the manager of the Memorial Library. Well, the, I, I started working at the library as the bookmobile person. And the bookmobile did a lot of outreach um, and traveled over three counties. It's kind of like a... Uh, library unto itself so I have a real passion for outreach and my role now as manager allows me to develop some ideas about programming and and um, prime time is is something I heard about about six years ago at a library conference and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for us. Okay, well very good. And we're going to learn a little bit more about prime time in just a moment because I know that you guys want, or you ladies want to make sure that the community is informed about it. And, and Loretta, tell us a little bit about yourself as, as I know you from the defects from years ago. <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about Loretta if you don't okay. mind. Okay, well yes I am retired from working with Troop Defects, but my first job actually was at the uh, LaGrange Library. Started when I was in the seventh grade and I worked at the library through my sophomore year at college. Um, with this position with Primetime Family Reading Time, I'm the community organizer, basically doing recruitment of families uh, to participate in the program. 
And uh, I'm hooked into the program basically because of my love of reading. I spent my summers as a child under the willow tree in the backyard reading all summer <laughs> long. And um, one of the things that in our family, we were encouraged to read. And I constantly encouraged my granddaughter to read. And it's an escape. It's a way to uh, increase vocabulary. You know, there are many places in the world we'll never see, but we can see them through books. So I think this was, uh, you know, an excellent opportunity for the families of LaGrange to participate in primetime family reading time. Family reading family time. Emphasis reading on family. Time. Family reading time. Very good. The program encourages the parents to be involved with their children. It's a six week program okay. and we're asking the parents to come along with the children uh, each week. Okay, well very good. Six weeks, and we don't, uh, it's called prime time family reading, reading. Mm -hmm. time. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and Catherine, you were saying you were at a conference and you heard about this. Now I understand that this is a program that's endorsed by the National Endowment. Talk for about that. For humanity. Yeah. Talk about that for us. Um, and, and the state of Louisiana picked it up and developed it as a, as a program. But um, because it is the National Endowment, there is a lot of documentation, um, statistics and and um, they they keep records of how um, how it's going and actually prime time has shown to be th one of the most effective programs around um, and the the students who participate actually score higher in in all subjects um, so I think that is um, because it is we encourage the family to help um, with reading and en that enjoyment and that encourages bonding so it's a real family project. Now when you guys are recruiting families what are you looking for? I, I here's family so I'm sure children have to be involved. Talk about the family makeup that you're looking for. Well we're looking for um, single family, if single parent families it does not matter. Um, basically we're looking for families with children from the ages of three to uh, ten However, if they have a sibling that's a little bit older than 10, they can also participate. The program is divided into two segments. You have a school age portion where we will have a storyteller, and our storyteller is actually Sandra Hall from um, Gardner Newman. She's a middle school teacher. She's our storyteller. And then the, we're going to have discussions facilitated by Dr. Brenda Thomas in the school age program. Then with the preschool program, we have a coordinator for that, okay. uh, and that's Gwendolyn Clinton, and she's going to be working. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's a connection. <laughs> okay. <here>. <laughs> she's going to be working with the preschoolers, and they have their own set of um, programs that they're going to work through with the kids. Uh, so we're looking for just entire families. If you've got two children, three children, four, mm -hmm. it does not matter as long as the parents are willing to commit to participating for six weeks. Okay. The parents, ha it's not a drop your kid off okay. program. It's mom, dad, grandma, you know, whoever is the care primary caretaker for that child, adult, uh -huh. has to participate as well. Because see what's going to happen out there, the kids are going to be given books to carry home to read with their parents and then the next week they come back and the storyteller will actually tell the story and there'll be a discussion about the story and it's oh. open-ended there's um, no right or wrong answer to the questions it's just everybody getting involved and looking at how the story has affected or can impact that family. Oh my, that yeah. sounds exciting and now Catherine I, I saw you holding up one of the books there. Yeah, the, um, this is one of the books we're going to be reading and the pictures themselves are just like oil paintings mm -hmm. in a museum. They're beautiful. Um, and okay. this is another one that is an award-winning book. Um, we'll do this one. Okay. And then with a little humor, we're going to find out ah, the true story, the true story. <laughs> of the three little pigs. Okay. And really, as distinguished as the, uh, the team is, we're really all moms who love to read and this is just the most perfect way to share that love of reading okay. so it's we're going to have fun well, good. it sounds <laughs> like it's going to be fun i was looking there at the pictures that before we came on and as you stated Catherine, they are very much you know a story within themselves mm -hmm. now we're talking about uh, you know the, the prime time family reading where would where were the families meet I'm, I'm going to assume they would meet at the library mm -hmm. so where would the families meet and, and when 
um, we're going to meet um, in the lobby and then we'll go to the main, the large meeting room. <clears throat> there we'll um, share a light meal and, and get to know each other and fellowship. Then we'll break up into the uh, school age and then the parallel program with the, the younger brothers and sisters. Okay, very good. And actually, Alton, the program starts on September the 17th, okay. uh -huh. 6 o'clock, and it will run through October the 22nd. Okay, very good. At 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Oh, and, and we've tried to remove all the obstacles, so not only do we offer dinner, but if you need transportation, we'll come get you. Oh, okay. So, so there's no excuses what nope. you're saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, very good. And, and, you know, again, this is something that is so near. And let me ask you the question, ladies, because both of you have already kind of given your personal testimonies as to why you read. Why do you think this is something that is so important in our community? Well, I, I, you know, there is awareness that if you don't have a certain reading proficiency by third grade, you're not going to really make it successfully through high school. Um, and I think if we can just emphasize how wonderful reading is and give people the opportunity to experience that, that they are going to um, just jump on board and, and, um, and succeed. Okay. Well, very good. Loretta? When you think about the fact that a reading is, is very valuable to us in our daily living, the library is a, a resource major resource in our community that's not used I think as much as it could be used mm -hmm. um, and this is a program that also helps with the reading but it put it can pull families into the library and they can get uh, the services they need to help with mm -hmm. with school with uh, job searching so there's a lot of things that can go on at the library mm -hmm. but th the main thing is it's <coughs> this program will help in bonding of our families uh -huh. you know when you look at the American family there's a lot of deterioration so whatever we can do to help pull our families back together mm -hmm. and if we can pull them together <coughs> over um, something that's going to benefit the children in the long run such as reading and these are some wonderful stories they're talking about work ethics, they're talking about self-esteem, you know, just using your imagination, things that will help the children as they go through school. So I think it's just a great program that uh, is offered, and it's free. <laughs> well, absolutely. How, yeah. how often do we have something that's, yeah. you, <clears throat> transportation is provided, uh -huh. dinner is provided, mm. um, the children are going to be given uh, books to carry home to read, and books to keep at the end of the program. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Let me ask the question as we get ready to close. How many families do you all want to have in the program? Or how many can you all accommodate? 25. Okay. 25. And while we're, the families are there, they're going to be learning about the resources of the library. Um, and we have partnered, it isn't just us, we've partnered with the uh, servant scholars at LaGrange College. Okay. They'll be helping out. Circles of Troop County will be participating. Um, Let's see, Second Chance, uh, mm -hmm. Twin Cedars okay. will be a part. So it's, an, it's a, community a wonderful, effort. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah oh, very good, yeah. very good. So now if someone was listening and they want to get in touch with you all, is there a contact number they can contact? Either one of you ladies, go ahead and give that out for us, Catherine. Okay, <coughs> it would be the um, LaGrange Library and it's 706-882-7784. And I'm Catherine Adams. I'll be the the um, contact person. Okay. Well, ladies, this is a wonderful program, the Primetime Family Thanks. Reading Time. And I know that you all will get as many people as you all can accommodate. And hopefully we can just kind of stir about the reading and the, the importance of it and continue to make sure that our kids reach that third grade and higher level of proficiency as far as reading is concerned. I want to say to both you ladies, thank you very much for coming on the show today to share this information. Thank Thanks for having us. us. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Week in just a moment. Welcome back to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. My guest is now on from West Georgia Help. I have on Dr. Ravina Kadam. 
with the look, internal medicine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ganon, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you, and I think this is my first time having you on the show. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, great to have you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to get into something that the, I know the community would like to hear about. Tell us a little bit about Kadam, if you don't mind. Sure. <coughs> well, I'm um, Dr. Ravina Kadam. I'm a part of West Georgia Physicians. Okay. And uh, so we are a part of the hospital. My office is located in the medical park. Um, and uh, we see patients of all, with all medical problems. I do specialize in hypertension, osteoporosis, diabetes, um, but uh, chronic medical problems, you know, any medical conditions uh, we can very much take care of. Okay. And I've um, been here in LaGrange for over three years now. All right. And um, love it. Well, very good. So you love LaGrange, huh? Yes. Okay, very good. Very uh, appreciative group of people here. Very good. You know, I always have to ask the question, what is it, and, and I know that you came here to work, and I, what is it that they like so much about our community? Because I know that we're getting a lot of people to coming in. So what's one of the things that you like, I guess, primarily about our community? I think <coughs> as a physician, what we really look for is appreciation from the patients. Um, we definitely saw the need here, you yeah. know, and um, we got accepted into the community with open hands and um, the warmth that we saw with the people here was overwhelming um, and we decided this is where we want to be. Well, very good. We're very happy to have you here in well, the community as well. Now, and you say you have a number of uh, patients that you see from hypertension to various things, but today we're going to talk a little bit about heat exhaustion, even though we're in the latter part of summer, we'll actually kind of transition out of summer, but it's never too late to talk about heat exhaustion. Absolutely. And, and we were talking before we came on, especially, you know, more so prevalent in the summertime, but do you still see patients come in in your office now that may be suffering from symptoms of, of heat exhaustion? Sometimes we do. Okay. Now, <coughs> heat exhaustion is something that you see more in the summer because the more the sun exposure um, the more you <coughs> tend to get dehydrated and the more you can have symptoms of heat exhaustion. But yes, we do um, every so often have people come in. So I think this would be a great opportunity to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about it and um, maybe we can help people prevent it. That would be a great thing. Absolutely. And you're talking about prevention. When, now, and, and we know that the exposure to the sun is one of the things that cause heat exhaustion. Are there other causes uh, things that might trigger heat exhaustion? There's risk factors, of course. Um, you know, age groups, um, little kids, and even before uh, they're about four years old, older people over 65 are more prone to it just because the body doesn't respond as quickly to extensive heat, something we call acclimatization, as it would otherwise. So those people are more prone to it. Um, of course, athletes, you know, because they're out in the sun a lot. Mm -hmm. um, people with heart conditions, with kidney disease are more prone to it. Certain medications that a lot of us take do make us prone to it, like diuretics, uh, the water pill, like we call it, tranquilizers, um, antidepressants can. Uh, some medicines we take for the heart, like beta blockers, can make you more prone to it. Okay. Now, when you're taking any of those medications, do you need to take a lot of, make sure you take excessive amounts of water, or what, what's the, what, what can, I guess? Well, it's important that if you're going to have sun exposure, if you're going to do an ac outdoor activity, or if you're going to be playing a sport, or anything that's going to make you be more exposed to the sun, you've got to keep yourself well hydrated. Okay. Uh, <coughs> but if you have any of these conditions, uh, you got to make sure you take that extra step. Excellent. Of course, a lot of conditions, especially with respect to the heart, um, we talk to people about not drinking too much water. So talk to your doctor oh. before uh, you go ahead and start taking too much. Oh, really? To not to drink too much water mm -hmm. when you have a, like a heart condition or something? Right. Oh, if really? you have a weak heart. A weak heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like congestive heart failure. Okay. Oh, very good information. Mm -hmm. and, and when we're talking about water, of course, we know that during the hot times of the year, we try to encourage people to stay away from the sugary drinks. Talk about the importance of that, Dr. Kanal. Well, water is the best, really. Mm -hmm. um, we recommend at least eight glasses of water a day. If you're going to have an outdoor activity, we recommend maybe a couple glasses uh, a few hours before you're heading out. Um, water about half hour between 
you know, while you're out there, even if you're not thirsty, keep drinking every 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Sugary drinks are not good, but there are certain sport drinks that sometimes may be of benefit because if you're out there doing an activity for a long time, in addition to being volume depleted, you can get salt depleted too. And that sometimes manifests as cramps. Uh -huh. So at that time, a sports drink is very important because it can replete you of all the salts that you're losing out on. Um, but that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Well, very good. And, you know, you were mentioning about athletes and, and them being out in the heat. And unfortunately, we've seen over the couple of the past lately here years, you know, athletes that we would think would be in good health, you know, younger kids, you know, maybe f passing out from heat exhaustion or some other Same. type of uh, symptoms there. How important, I know this is kind of getting off what your exper you know, expertise might be, how important is it for that athlete to make sure they have a good physical before they get involved in various activities? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, there are a few medical conditions that make you more prone mm -hmm. to um, heat exhaustion. So if they have any of those conditions, then you need to, of course, talk to your doctor and come up with a plan as to how we need to replete the fluids. Uh, before the activity, but in general, if they're physically fit, they are less likely to have heat exhaustion. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, someone may uh, feel like they may be coming over overcome by heat. What are some of the things that they can do? You mentioned drinking the water. Uh, what are some other things that they can do to protect themselves? Well, excellent question. I think one very important thing is um, if they're in the middle of an activity and they feel all the symptoms come up, first thing is to get away from the sun. You know, the exposure shouldn't be there in an air conditioning unit if possible, in an air conditioned place. Mm -hmm. um, always get out with uh, a sun protection factor of 30 plus, so a sunblock is important okay. to protect you from those UV lights. Uh, the third thing, of course, is very light clothes, not very tight clothing. Uh, lighter colors definitely protect you mm -hmm. and keep that water going. Yeah, keep the water going. That's Absolutely. Right. And it's so important you talk about the light clothing too because that helps to cool the body as well. Yes. Uh, acts like an air conditioning within Absolutely. itself. Absolutely. And lighter colors reflect the sun's radiations where darker colors absorb them. Uh -huh. So you're more likely to get that heat bother your body if you're wearing a darker color. A darker color coat. So important. Even though, like I say, even though we're kind of in a lot of parts of the, of the summertime, Heat exhaustion, I guess, can happen at any time. Cause Absolutely. Because I guess people, you say, for example, you talked about age a while ago, you're talking about older people. Let's say if someone, an older person, is inside a home that's not properly air conditioned, could they be victimized, a victim of heat exhaustion as well? Unlikely. Okay. If unlikely. it's just at home with mm -hmm. improper air conditioning, it's unlikely. Okay. All of right. course, if they are not well hydrated, they, they are likely to. So drinking that water is important. Okay. Um, people who are obese have more surface area. And so um, they, they tend to get dehydrated more often okay. than people who are not. So that's another thing to watch for. Making sure they get that fluids in. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and I guess we talk, we've talked about you know, the, some of the symptoms and things of that nature, getting out of the, 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 the threat there, getting out of the sun and things of that nature. Any other final clothing tips that a person can do to protect themselves from heat exhaustion? Though? Sometimes if you're out there and you start getting the symptoms of heat exhaustion, one important thing to do is after you get in, remove any tight clothing or clothing that is not necessary. Um, that definitely helps get that heat out. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Well, Dr. Ravina, I, I want to thank you for coming on and Absolutely. kind of sharing this information. It's been a pleasure. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. And, and again, we just want to say welcome to our community. And, and definitely, if and now let, us ask, let me ask this question real quick before we close out. If there was someone that would like to get in touch with you, because you also mentioned other uh, areas of expertise Absolutely. that you carry, can they contact you to kind yes, of ask questions? Yes, please. We mm -hmm. are now taking, of course, accepting new patients. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be happy to uh, take care of anyone in our community. Um, but yeah, they can contact my office. Okay. Uh, should I give off the, you can, the telephone means. number? Uh -huh. It's 706-8807-361. Okay, very good. So and you're located out, located located out in the medical park? Located at the medical park. park. Well, very mm -hmm. good. And we're sitting down today with Dr. Ravina Kadam and, and talking about heat exhaustion. So Dr. Ravina uh, Kadam, <laughs> getting tongue-tied there. <laughs> thank you very much for being on the show with Absolutely. us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for City Week this week. My guests have been from the LaGrange Memorial Library, the manager, Catherine Adams, and also the community organizer, Loretta Clinton, as they talked about the Primetime Family Reading Time program that will be taking place 
starting September the 17th and will run through October the 22nd. So by all means, ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in getting your child in a reading program, give them a call there at the LaGrange Memorial Library. Also, I had on from the West Georgia Health, Dr. Ravina Kadam, as she talked about heat exhaustion and some of the symptoms of heat exhaustion. Even though we're later into the summer, ladies and gentlemen, it's never too soon or never too late to talk about and hear about heat exhaustion. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed those interviews. And as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week.